Today, prices are plummeting. AMD's insane new CPU destroys last gen, Nvidia's abandoning gamers, and AMD's doing it. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, one of the main benefits of new releases not really meeting expectations is price drops. And as you can see right here, AMD's Ryzen 9000 series, as I somewhat already went over, but it seems like things are getting even better or worse if you're AMD, so it really just depends on who you are. But basically, as you can see right here, there are price drops pretty much across the board. Starting things off, we have the 9950X. Oh, and it's going to get even better in just a second, so make sure you keep watching this segment. But as you can see, the Ryzen 9 9950X was originally launched with an MSRP of $649, but at Micro Center, it's now gotten as low as $619.99, Amazon $623.29, and all the rest of them basically $623.29. Then moving down to the 9900X, it went all the way from $499 to as low as $439.99 at Micro Center. Then we moved down to the 9700X, which launched at $359 MSRP, and not much of a difference, but still a drop at Micro Center as low as $349.99. Then finally, we have the 9600X, which launched at $279, is down to $269.99 at Micro Center, or if you're willing to shop at eBay, to $59.99. But like I said, things actually get significantly better because with new CPUs brings lower prices on the last generation. And this is no exception here. And in fact, even since this came out, you can see the 7950X, which of course isn't that much worse than the 9950X, which is sort of the reason these prices are dropping. But regardless, the 7950X, you can see it says 410 and then the 7700X at 220. But in fact, it's even better since this article released. As you can see right here, the 7950X is all the way down to $389 from $699. And then the 7700X down to just 209. Basically, prices are getting amazing. And of course, if you'd like to check out one of these CPUs, I'll have affiliate links down in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Really quick update, for whatever reason, Reason, right after I got through with this segment, the 7000 series CPUs that I was showing you randomly went up. They went up, then down a little bit. I'm really not sure what's going on with AMD, but luckily the 9000 series discounts are still there. It's just these 7000 CPUs, and honestly, if I were you, I would just keep a lookout for it. They really may go down again, so yeah, just keep a lookout on those. And next up for today, AMD's next-gen 128-core monster Epic CPU is set to release and release very soon. In the meantime, we actually got one of our first benchmarks, and let's just say it's unbelievable. Oh, and if you love keeping up with all the latest PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to Gamer Melt. Either way, as you can see right here, this was originally leaked by HXL, and it's in the 7-zip benchmark. And we have the 9754 128-core Zen 4C CPU versus the 9755 128-core full-on Zen 5 CPU. Now, right off the bat, you might be thinking, okay, this isn't exactly a fair comparison, given the fact that we're comparing the little Zen 4C cores versus the full-on Zen 5 cores. But don't forget, that this Bergamo CPU does actually beat the last gen full Zen 4 CPU. Yes, it does have quite a bit fewer cores, but that's kind of what's interesting about this comparison. And of course, right off the bat, you will notice that it does have a higher wattage. The Zen 4C part comes with a TDP of 360 watts, while the full Zen 5 part comes with 500 watts. But let me actually get to the performance difference here, and you'll see why this is still a really interesting comparison. For starters, you can see, well, right off the bat, I do want to say that both of these, for whatever reason, are really just comparing 64 cores instead of the full 128 cores. But you can see right down here that they are both 128 core processors. Either way, when it comes to performance, as you can see, the 9754 got 195 and 197 giga instructions per second 
versus the 9755 getting literally double. And as you can see right here, as they say, that's a 2x performance at just 38% power increase. Basically, it's looking like if this holds true throughout the 128 cores, AMD's next-gen Epic CPU is set to destroy the current-gen champ. And next up, many of you may not have noticed that NVIDIA has been focusing on something other than gaming for a little while now. I'm not even sure if you've really heard of it. It's this small emerging market called uh, oh, AI. Of course, all jokes aside, AI is something seemingly everyone's talking about. It's become in an absolutely gigantic market. Some people think that it's a bubble at this point and it's going to burst before too long, but at least at the moment, company after company is spending billions on this emerging tech. And NVIDIA, through all of it, has completely and utterly come out on top. Now, that's not a big surprise given the fact that the company is one of the driving forces in even creating this new market. So it is, of course, understandable. But just to give you an idea of how big of a difference we're talking here in NVIDIA's most recent quarterly update, you can see that data center, AI, all that stuff, their revenue, so their total revenue was $26 billion. And with data center, i.e. AI, we're looking at 22 billion. 0.6 billion of that. Gaming, the next biggest one, is just 2.6 billion. So we're talking 8% of the revenue versus 23. Basically, the company is beginning to focus more and more on AI for what you would argue is a very good reason. And unfortunately, that means that they're really pulling from the gaming side of things. And there's no better way to illustrate this than NVIDIA's new RTX case badge. As you can see right here, it says NVIDIA updated the official case badge of GeForce RTX with the byline powering advanced AI. That's right. Even their gaming focused GeForce RTX cards are now touting AI acceleration. As you can see, moving on further, it says, although OEMs tend to skip this badge on the chassis of their gaming desktops, their notebooks tend to proudly flash the case badge near that of the processor. The byline, as they say, is well earned as NVIDIA's leading hardware brand in the AI acceleration and even its most affordable GeForce RTX models include tensor cores, which accelerate AI inference. But the issue with at least if you ask me, is that it's really looking like NVIDIA is caring less and less about their gaming side of things. Now, when it comes to finances, like I said, that is almost entirely understandable, but if you're a gamer like me, that's obviously a pretty big issue. We've seen in the past where NVIDIA will move over production of gaming chips so they can produce more of their H100 GPUs, basically their accelerator cards for AI. And this, at least if you ask me, is yet another step by NVIDIA showing that they're leaving gamers behind. And lastly for today, if you saw one of my recent videos, you know that MSI announced a new feature within their BIOS for their 600 series motherboards. That feature being an option, you can see it right down here, to enable a 105 watt CDP for the 9700X and 9600X CPUs. And at the time, the question was, is this an official thing that's eventually gonna come from AMD? And it looks like we now have that answer, and it's very good. As you can see right here, this was asked, it says, great, but still wonder if it's under AMD specifications, so that guarantees the warranty. And in a response, Hassan from WCC AdTech stated that it is an official release and the spec in 1.2.0.2, basically what this is, is this is in a GISA firmware update that comes from AMD and the motherboard vendors put it in their BIOS. So basically starting with 1.2.0.2, a GISA update, it will finally be official where we can actually have that 105 watt CDP. Not only that, but because it is official, that does mean the warranty is approved by AMD. And at least if you ask me, this is good on multiple levels, because if you remember when it was leaked that AMD was contemplating upping the TDP to potentially 105 watts, a lot of people are asking, well, hey, what if I wanted a 65 watt CPU? Now I'm all of a sudden not gonna have a choice, 
But given this and given what we've seen from MSI, you can see that that is in fact a choice. You just enable it in the BIOS, which means if you don't want to enable it, well, you don't have to. You can stick to 65 watts. And if you do end up upping it to 105 watts, it's not going to be considered an overclock or anything like that, because at least if this ends up being correct, you are still under warranty. So while that does it for today, are you pumped to get more performance out of your 9700X and 9600X CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.